Send money with MoneyGram for a chance to win tickets to an ICC Champions Trophy 2013 match. Visit one of our thousands of agent locations or send money online. MoneyGram, bringing you closer. Official money transfer partner of the ICC Champions Trophy 2013. Thank you very much. You know, Africa, we must always remember, has 54 countries. And those 54 countries are at different um, levels of development. There's some African countries that you cannot say are underdeveloped, are actually are, are quite developed, you know, um, middle income countries and stuff like that. And some of them with actually quite advanced levels of infrastructure. There are also, I mean, countries like South Africa, Mauritius, um, and so on, have a high level of development. There are also countries that are underdeveloped, you know, Southern Sudan, Eritrea, places like that. So it's always um, important to um, make it distinct that it's not one country, but 54 countries at different levels of development. In saying that, um, some parts of Africa are underdeveloped, grossly underdeveloped. Um, but we must also always remember that sometimes underdevelopment offers opportunity. I remember a story from, I think it was... Um, uh, Somalia, several many years ago, I watched on Africa Open for Business DVD, where when the government collapsed, a bunch of private sector people, because the national airline collapsed, a whole new airline industry was birthed, because a bunch of private sector people got together and formed five airlines. They regulated themselves, they built runways, and they flew, and the airlines grew, actually. Um, so that was a case of underdevelopment offering opportunity. Having said that, there is also a lot of barriers that underdevelopment creates, which some foreign investors may find as an inhibition. Um, so I think the summary would be, yes, on the one hand, Africa is underdeveloped in some parts, well-developed in other parts, mid mid at middle stages in some parts. It offers an opportunity. It can be barriers and challenges, but it's possible to overcome some of these challenges. I think that for the large part, African education is not developing enough business leaders. I think historically we've, we've had an education system that produces um, a lot of worker mentality kind of people. Maybe that is from our colonial past, I don't know. Um, but in saying so, I have begun to see from different parts of the country um, new schools, curriculum, you know, things emerge that are now targeting more on raising business leaders. I don't think we've reached critical mass yet. I think, you know, the, the statistics is that you need 5% of your, you know, school finishing population to go into private sector for you to reduce unemployment to, to, to very low. I don't think we've arrived at 5%. I don't think we've got enough education to get there. I think there is more that can be done. I've heard leading universities in some countries like in Nigeria and Kenya and places actually saying we are doing an education system that is training people to create jobs and not just to be workers. It's encouraging to hear that we need more of that. Um, and going forward, the, 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 the opportunity is huge for more business leadership based kind of education. More of a prestige thing, more of a mindset thing. The, 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 the British were our colonial masters. There is something that makes London more valid than Lagos. You know, it sounds more valid to people. But I think it's more of a perception thing. You know, um, when you look at a cross-section, I, I remember two years ago reading a list of the richest men in America, three years ago, and nine of the ten of them were university dropouts. So there is nothing that says, I, I doubt that there is any statistic that says that NBA automatically means a successful business leader. You know, um, there are chances. Men like Aliko Dangote uh, grew up in Lagos, I mean, worked in Lagos. I don't think he has an MBA from Oxford or something. Um, so it's a prestige thing that we have developed over the years. It does not necessarily mean that um, a guy who went to Oxford will be a better business person than a guy who went to university in Cape Town. 
Um, but having said that, some places, some, some, some places are more practical in their orientation towards business development than others. They offer you more opportunity to interact with real life business people than others. Obviously, in London, there is more business. So there is a greater opportunity to interact with somebody who has done business successfully. That gives you an advantage to doing it in some African country where there's very few successful business people, there's very few role models. Yes, again, it's 54 countries. Um, I think Africa has more than enough resources to uh, encourage foreign investors. I know when we say resources, we quickly think of the natural and mineral resources. But the biggest resource in Africa is its people, close to or about, about a billion people right now. It's a growing market, you know. Um, it, it was said that in the next 15, 20 years, Africa could have the largest middle class or one of the largest middle classes in the world. That's a market. That's people who want to buy. So foreign investors should be thinking, wow, what if I sell my product to 200 million people? Right now, the African middle class sits about, at about anything between 100 and 300 million, depending on which uh, set of statistics you use. That's huge, you know. Um, so yes, then now when you move to the area of natural resources, I mean, everybody knows Africa's agriculture can feed the world. Africa has fresh water. Africa has all kinds of natural resources. It's huge. You know, the opportunities are huge. The potentials are huge. And people should be looking at this in the long term. You know, Africa has so many problems that uh, sometimes when you ask that question, one thing is where do I start from? But I think there are some very basic things we can do that will, you know, speed us up. One of the challenges we have in Africa is that some of our markets are so small because we have 54 different countries with 54 business regimes. Some markets are so small that they don't really attract foreign investors. Some countries are a million people. Now, if we were able to take out the trade barriers and encourage intra-Africa trade, that would boost our business hugely. There is a lot of business we take outside of, of Africa that we should actually be doing amongst ourselves. You know, so if you take out those trade barriers, not only will foreign investors see larger markets, like for example, Southern Africa has 200 and something million people or West Africa has these huge hundreds of millions of people. So investors will see larger markets that they can access from one position, um, but also we would trade and keep trade within ourselves. That will grow our economy. The other thing Africa needs to do is really invest in its education, educating business leaders. I personally think that curriculum, primary school, probably even secondary school curriculum should be um, business education, entrepreneurship should be integrated at that level. So that by the next generation, we have a large number of people thinking wealth creation. Another thing our business, our leaders should really look at, and we should really look at, is infrastructure. Infrastructure is, is, the, is the backbone of development in any society. It's like the nerve system of the body. If you have roads and rail and airlines that traverse the continent, more business will happen instantly. A very good example is the Maputo corridor between South Africa and um, Maputo. You need to see the amount of trade that happens between those countries as a result of that expressway. Um, and then two more things I think are important. Agriculture is one thing we should pursue because agriculture has the highest potential to take to, to reduce unemployment. And food is a basic need. People will always eat food. And then manufacturing. There's no way we will develop if we're not producing most of the things that we need. We cannot develop by importing our basic needs. So these are just, I think, four or five things I've given. There are many other things that can be done, but these are important. Of course, policy is important to make these things happen, and then financial investment into those things. I think Africa can do far more. I think we're not marketing it ourselves quite well, even though in pockets, some countries are doing very well. South Africa is doing very well. Some countries here, Rwanda, places like that are doing quite well in marketing themselves. Um, I heard a little, some statistics a few last week from the World Economic Forum in Cape Town and um, one of the speakers was saying Africa has a per capita income that is higher than India. He said Africa has less conflicts than India, you know, and we have a GDP that is almost close to that of India. But India has a far better marketing than Africa does, you know, so it attracts more investment than Africa does at this time. So we could do well to publicize our potentials invest a lot in publicizing the potentials, publicizing the possibilities of Africa 
not denying the problems that we have, but also making sure that our possibilities have a lot of airtime. That will save. You know, investment also has to do with perception. When people think that things are happening here, when people see what is happening here, they will bring in more resources to be part of the African story. <music>